Every time I get pulled over by the cops, my heartbeat feels closer than ever. As if I have however many seconds from when the cop walks from his car to mine to reflect on my life. See, I've been pulled over many times. Most of them because I am who I am in a country that doesn't want me here when the lights flash. I pull over as carefully as possible. I try not to make any sudden movements while reaching for my wallet. I analyze the situation. Was I wrong? Was I going too fast? Or is this just another driving while brown stop? I take deep breaths. When, he, when the policeman reaches my door, I have already composed myself. I have already prepared my arguments and questions about being pulled over. I have already constructed how I'm going to tell him that it is unfair that he stopped me. That my skin color does not mean gang affiliation, thief, wrongdoer, or illegal. That he racially profiled me, therefore he is racist. When he arrives, as brave and as tough as I make myself feel, at the sight of his gun and his badge, my throat turns into his fist I cannot unclench. My heart is this drum who beats I cannot swallow. My tongue is the collapsed skyscraper, piles of dust and burned walls. My words are the Titanic in the middle of the Atlantic. I am sinking. When I manage to speak, uh, my voice breaks. I stutter. I speak in half words and half prayers. See, I never knew how many faults my voice could have until I was pulled over by these two cops in the dark streets. I never knew how unsafe a neighborhood could be until these two cops had their hand on their gun and there was no one to witness. I was afraid. And my mother, she taught me to speak up and not be spoken for by translating victim of police brutality into Spanish would not make the pain any easier to bear. I answer in, yes, sir. No, sir. I'm just going home, sir. Yes. This car is mine, sir. No, sir. Yes, sir. Of course, sir. Right away, I feel ashamed. Like everything my mother has taught me about self-respect has just been handcuffed, given life in prison without parole, and I did nothing to stop it. And I write about revolutions, about speaking up, of how my throat is a volcano, of how my tongue is the sharpest blade I will ever need, of how my mouth is full of arrows, of how words can carry the weight of an ocean, but what good is writing if it cannot stop cops from arresting me? What good is writing if bullets can still pierce my notebook's pages? As I drive away, with humiliation stuck in the back of my throat, Questioning what I stand for and if I believe what I preach. I clench my jaw and I grip the steering wheel tightly and remember that this, this is not about being a good writer if I believe the shit that I write. This is about getting home. Of overcoming years of being told that my voice and my body do not matter. This is about getting home. My mother, she has already lost two of her four children and I really don't want a cop to make me her third.